good day and welcome to another episode of Family Life, A Catholic Vision. Well, of course, you know you haven't really seen a live show from us in quite a while, but we're back here again in December and celebrating Advent with you and your families. So tonight, we are going to make this show a family affair. I have to admit, one of our members are missing, but I know that she's here in spirit, and I'm very, very happy to reintroduce to you people that you know already, but they are making a special appearance tonight because as I said, tonight it's a family affair on the show. So I just wanted to, sh to introduce my guests to you. We have Father Matthew Ragbeer. Thank you, and great to be here. Thank you, and we have The Sims. <laughs> How are you, The Sims? The Sims. That's Very well. All right. That's right. right. That's right. You know, there was a game called The Sims. Right, yes, there yes, was. The Sims. So, um, as you would know, Trisha and Raymond are the Episcopal delegates of the Family Life Commission, and Father Matthew is our spiritual director, and it's myself and Crystal Johnson also working. It's a great team of us, but we are a family, and we're here to celebrate with you today the season of advent now you know see um advent began yesterday and I've, i'm hoping everyone went to church to celebrate advent but we're here to bring it to you um on tonight's show our sharing on advent and how families can really practice or live out this season in a way that is truly um the essence of waiting and the essence of being patient um in this time so Let's get the show started. Um, of course, my guests here, the, Trisha and Raymond are laughing at me, and Father, oh, yeah, so nice in the corner here, but they're like, <laughs> okay, what question are we going to ask? But we're keeping tonight's show simple. Um, so this is my question, throwing out to you guys, you know, let's discuss this. Why do we celebrate Advent? Why, why, why is there a need, or why do we celebrate Advent? Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to get into it. Advent is the beginning of the liturgical season, you know. Mm -hmm. um, St. Bernard tells us many, many years ago, father of the church, he says there are three comings we celebrate, you know. First, that Jesus Christ came in history, and therefore, liturgically, we are preparing to celebrate, to remember he who came, the word became flesh, and that we do that at Christmas. But he also comes uh, sacramentally, or as some modern theologians write in mystery through the Eucharist as we do this in memory of him through the anointing through baptism all these sacraments are ways in which the Lord is present healing cleansing purifying forgiving sins feeding us etc we also encounter him through each other through yeah. his word but scripture tells us over and over using the Greek word parousia that he will as we say in our creed come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and therefore, that word parousia in Greek translates to the Latin adventus, mm. which from English we get advent. Right. And therefore, we, we celebrate this season because it's important for us to remember that you have these three comings. And, and not only to think about Christmas, you know, Christmas has its own cultural mm. identity in Trinidad, but most importantly, that he will come again. Yeah. And we need to prepare ourselves and as we heard in yesterday's gospel, nobody knows the time. So anybody who tells you they know when, you know, they lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, stay awake. Stay awake, stay that's right. Stay awake, yes. Um, only the Father in heaven, you know, only. nobody knows. So that's, mm -hmm. that's part of why we celebrate Advent. I don't know if you want to add yeah. anything. Can else. you all add something? Well, you know, when I was reading, you know, in preparation for the show and so on, I realized that Advent really started at home, in the family. But with the Christmas season and all, all of that coming into play, it kind of pushed Advent out of the home. And so the, ch the church, the, well, the wreath anyway, the wreath has now come into place. The church in the, at, at Mass, that's where the wreath came into place to remind us as a reminder of what Advent is. So Advent is really a home thing. And I think we need to bring it back there. Yes. No, my, my take on Advent, though, is, I mean, we hear it all the time about waiting. You know, it's a, it's a, I think the Archbishop in his column this week spoke about creative waiting and longing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking of it in terms of, you know, um, you're at a traffic light, right? You're at a traffic light. Red, stop, amber, 
yellow. You, you kind of have to wait. Right. And then green is go. So right now we're in a period of, of yellow. You know, yes. but I mean, yeah. if you look at what's going on on our roads today, yes. you, you, find a lot of, you find a lot of people, they can't wait anymore. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're always looking to, um, to keep going. Yeah, but, but yellow, to, means, uh, yellow means, yellow you know? means, let's get through here quickly. That's <laughs> what yellow <laughs> means. Um, disclaimer. <laughs> no, but I mean, but still, you, to you, me, need to, yeah. you need to, you need to, there must be a point in your life when you, you must be, you must learn to wait, mm -hmm. to be patient. Yes. You know, yeah, there must be a period of time. You know, if you're in a line, let's say, no, I'm not promoting any fast food out there, but you're in a, you're in a line, let's say, in KFC or Royal Castle or somewhere, you have to wait, you have to learn to wait. And, and you know, it's, you must learn and practice, um, uh, you could call it an art of waiting and being patient, you know. I think so. I think to that, that phrase, the art of waiting, is definitely, I think I will coin that yes, for yes. Advent because yes. it is an art. And it's so easy for us to get caught up in buying a million zillion mm -hmm. Christmas decorations and lighting up and all these different things. But we have to be mindful that we're in the period of Advent and we're waiting for something great to happen. Which and could happen at any time. It could happen at any time, <laughs> yes. But thank you. that is a good reminder, the art of waiting. And it helps us, if we practice this now, we'll be able to practice waiting in many other yeah. situations yeah, well, that are before us. I just want to add, you know, I mean, you, you, you spoke just about it could happen at any time, but yeah. I was talking to Trisha last night, preparing for this show, and, and I was saying to myself, um, you know, we, we become complacent at times yes. mm -hmm. because we wait in, we still right. wait in, we wait in for right. how, how can it happen tomorrow? Can it happen right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we become complacent, we become relaxed, we mm -hmm. become comfortable. And then what happens? That is why I think at, at a certain level, Advent becomes, you know, it, it, it's put aside as compared to Christmas, which is, mm -hmm. you the know. Thing. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know. the big thing. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lovely story that I read um, from a very famous American storyteller. Mm -hmm. He says about Advent, he says, um, that, well, I don't know if it's his story, so that's a disclaimer, <laughs> but he, he was sharing this story, that a man goes to God and says, um, I, I think, the, I don't want to get it wrong, but the question is something like, what is life about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God says to him, you know, so there's a bit of God being personalized as a, as a human person. God says, I'm feeling a little thirsty. Could you go get me some water? The man goes off to a nearby village and knocks on the door and out comes a very beautiful woman. And he says, he manages to pull his words together and says, well, I want to get some water, a glass of cool water, please. And she says to him, but it's midday. You want to come in and eat? And then the story says, 30 years later, they're married. They have five huh? children. <laughs> and something happens. And he begins to cry, God, I need you. And God shouts her, where's my glass of water? <laughs> And the, the storyteller, who's a priest, you know, was reflecting on the fact that quite often what happens in Ad Advent is this time of reminding us that we get distracted with so many things. Mm -hmm. you know, Matthew's Gospel speaks about, you know, um, people at the mill working and marrying and having children and all these things and, and you know, one take and one left. It, it could happen at any time. Mm -hmm. And we, we get caught up in life and in the, mm -hmm. the things of this world so much that we forget this world is not our real home. And Advent is this time of reminding us about that. Yeah. Um, there's a quote that Archbishop B. Like, likes to use from the Italian spiritual writer Carlo Caretto that says, this world is really like God's womb. You know, think of a womb, you know, nine months gestation in a human mm -hmm. life cycle. Mm -hmm. And when we die, we'll be born f into the real life. Mm -hmm. That is eternal life. Mm -hmm. And Advent is a time of putting in, put into perspective that Yes, don't get too comfortable here. Mm -hmm. yeah. We live the opposite. We think this is yeah, real life, I, and we, whatever comes <laughs> next, well, <laughs> when that comes, we'll see. And we mm -hmm. become fearful and all sorts of things about them. But it's, it's to remember that, you know, we, this, you know, the old song says, this world is not my home, you know, I'm just a passerby. I remember when I was pregnant, um, how much I enjoyed Advent, mm -hmm. because it, re I, it really reminded me that we need yeah. to wait yeah. Yeah. when you're pregnant. Uh, Chris was born in March, so December, and Johan was born in May. So I had two pregnancies mm -hmm. where I had to wait. And I remember um, you couldn't force things. I couldn't force the children out. I had to wait until they were ready. 
and just that whole period of waiting, I had to slow down too, so I couldn't be cleaning the house yeah, and so all I, the other I things. I had to be cleaning the house. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> very good job, Raymond. Yeah. Taking yeah. notes. I had to be but you know, you can be lifting things, climbing yes, here, doing yeah, these yeah. things. You had yeah. to journey with and it sit and, still. and sit yeah. still. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't easy. No. But it taught me that sometimes, and my mother would say sometimes, I sit still too much now. <laughs> but um, it, it just taught me that you need to keep quiet. But it wasn't just being uh, it physically quiet. It was a time of just and reflecting on Jesus' birth, on his coming. And not only his coming, because it's one, Advent is about preparation for Christmas, but it's also preparation for his second coming, mm -hmm. which, you know, is beyond Christmas because it could be any time. Yes. And I think a lot of times we think that we, it's Christmas, it's Christmas, and Christmas and Advent get stuck together. Yep. But it's not, it's not <coughs> Christmas alone. Yep. You know, it's preparing. And how are we really preparing for Jesus' is coming, hmm. not only at Christmas time, but mm -hmm. you know, at all, any time. You know, it's so funny you said that because I mean, I, well, the audience don't know, but I will be getting married in the next two weeks. <laughs> and um, at this point in time, I'm, I'm not well, but um, I am waiting for it to happen. And I have to say that whew, this has been a very long waiting time because I have been preparing. And, you know, we are speaking about it now. And I really like the um, phrase that Raymond said about the art of waiting because I have been waiting to get married. And I am on the home stretch and I'm not feeling well. And I'm asking God, OK, what happened? All the time I was doing well, you know, I've been preparing, I've been waiting, I've been patient on what's happening now. But Advent, I, I'm realizing that this is my time of waiting. I'm on the home stretch. I'm so lucky to be doing it within the season of Advent because I would always remember that I got married during Advent and it's reflective of waiting for something so it wonderful would be on the, to happen. The weekend of joy, you know? It the would be. Joy. It would be on the weekend of joy. Yeah. So, I mean, this Advent season, as we bring it to the table here, is bringing up a lot of interesting things, Father. Yes. So, it's the first week, the first week is but the, Sunday, well, yesterday, was yesterday, this week, we think of hope. hope. Right. You know, yes. Think of hope. Uh, traditionally. Yeah. You know. um, the second week, we think of love. Hope, love, and joy. The third hope, week, yeah. uh, as we see there, this pink candle. Yeah. Um, and some priests in, in, you know, in some parts of the world have the pink vestment, and it's uh, Gaudete, you know, this mm -hmm. joy. Right. Mm -hmm. And the fourth week, yeah. traditionally, is peace. Sometimes you see faith, um, so that you have the theological virtues there. But, but peace is what it's traditionally yeah. thought of. These things that Christ brings us, you know, yeah. hope, love, yeah. joy, yeah. Like peace. peace. Um, well, it's yeah. so funny that we're talking about the candles because my other question to you was, um, what is the purpose of the Advent wreath? I mean, we have the candles, and you just explained that each one yes. of them is representative of something wonderful. But what is the purpose? What kind of direction does it give us? You now, mean? I will share a little bit about it afterwards. But Trisha just said she read so much about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. So, oh, okay. So, yes, so let's, so let's share with us about the Advent wreath. <laughs> right. So, according to Advent Prayer and Reflection by mm -hmm. Bishop, Bishop Robert, Robert Yanis, um, it says, the, um, the original Christian wreath consisted of a circle of wire which represented the unending love of God. So the circle of wire, mm -hmm. and then we have the evergreens, which is the greens. The evergreens adorning the wreath symbolized the hope of eternal life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that God's people share. And we have the four candles, three purple and one pink. Um, the four candles set in the wreath represented the four weeks until Christmas, as well as the centuries spent awaiting the coming of the Messiah. And this year, we, ha we actually have four weeks, yes. four Sundays, because mm -hmm. Christmas is, is a Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. Right? And then the lighting of, an addition of the candles, each week of an additional candle, so we lighted yesterday, right. the first week of Advent, the lighting of an additional candle each week in Advent celebrated the growing anticipation for the light that came into the world when Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. nice. So, you know, that's the Advent wreath. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that with thank us, Trisha. I see like Raymond have something no, no, that, no, no, you know, you, oh, say. total support of your wife yeah, and whatever yeah, she yeah. should. Yeah. No, no problem. That's a Sims thing, yeah. Um, but um, 
later on in the show, we have a little surprise for you where we're actually going to be trying to make a wreath with you so that um, you can get all your things together when it is you want to make your wreath. So we're gonna try and make a wreath on set and show you how you can make your own wreath at home with your family. So you talking know, about, yeah, go ahead, Father. To add some things about the wreath. The mm -hmm. wreath in its original context was something that, you know, Christianity has always taken things from um, practices mm -hmm. from in the world and baptized them, you know? Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, at Christmas you had people who lit candles and in preparation and all these sorts of things. And it became like the Christmas tree and it became part and parcel of um, Christianity. But what is interesting too is that in North America and in Europe, so these um, temperate climates, you would see wreaths with pine cones and mm -hmm. little nuts and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and for them, it was, they are signs of the fruitfulness of the Christian life, mm -hmm. you know, and the... Um, and the way in which the resurrection bears fruit in our lives. And so it's always something, you know, sometimes you go into places and people don't understand the original meaning of the read. They say, why well, we can have, use um, white, mm -hmm. um, you know, spray painted green. white mm -hmm. instead of green and put all sorts of Christmas decorations all mm -hmm. over it and put all sorts of lights. Well, the wreath in its simplicity sends a very powerful message and therefore we ought to try and keep it as Simple, simple as possible, simple. you know. Yeah. It's not a Christmas tree, you know. <laughs> I know some parishes people maybe say, oh no, you know, but, but it's true, you know. We have to um, somehow recover the essence of, of all these things for us and, and trying to reflect on it. Last night we had a beautiful candlelight Advent evening in our parish in Santa Grande, mm -hmm. and everyone walked with a candle, you know, and we put a wreath in, it, mm. in front center of the church, and you just, we have some big candles, so, um, you know, you saw how that light just illumined in everything and as Trisha said week by week as we light more what we are recognizing is with Christ coming light conquers the darkness you mm -hmm. know um, yeah and each one of us is a light you know yes um, and I think we need to reflect on that that we can make a difference without mm -hmm. you know in ourselves in our own families it starts with one mm -hmm. one one at a time and then yeah. it spreads mm -hmm. I was actually going to bring up the point where the wreath there, I saw some of the wreaths had so much decorations on it. Like when I was doing my research and stuff like that, and I was thinking to myself, is that right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it supposed to have just the four candles and just the wreath mm -hmm. there to represent, you know, something that is simple? Because I saw some wreaths that had poinsettias, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to bring all my decorations to stick on this wreath. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, wait. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. I, th I think it's supposed to be simple and just the candles and then as time goes along, you know. Yeah. There's no hard and fast rule mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it, you know, mm -hmm. but except the, the meaning that I've, I've read about the temperate countries where they, they pick all these fruit um, um, okay. acorns mm -hmm. and all these things and put them in mm -hmm. as signs of Christian, fruitfulness of Christian life. But it could become so distracting, you know, mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know. Yeah, it takes away from the essence of it being simple. Sometimes less is more. Yes. In a world where we think more is more. <laughs> <laughs> but I think culturally, and I think it all depends on the family too, yeah. but we, as Father said, less is more in a, lot of, in a lot of cases. And if you want to keep the focus, you know, what is yeah. the focus? Hey, is it the decorations? Is no. it the lights? What is it really? And yes. I think it's helping people to um, bring back the focus of what the Advent um, wreath means to us today. So you brought up um, families just now, and I'll throw this question out to you guys. The Sims. Um, yes, the <laughs> Sims. Um, wh why should families celebrate the Advent season? Why should we make this a family event? What can we, what can families learn from celebrating Advent? Oh, she's looking at <laughs> 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 So I, I would say, you know, I mean, we, we um, Trish could bear me out when, when the boys were a little smaller, they, they, they looked forward to um, the Advent season huh? because, you know, the, the whole symbolism of the lights, um, and it's, it's part of our church tradition, you know, and we, we want to pass that on to the boys, right? So um, you could jump in when you're ready, so jump in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, why, why should we? Well... I think it belongs in the home, mm -hmm. and um, and other than it being belonging in the home, 
I think it teaches a lesson about waiting. Mm -hmm. Now, we put up our Christmas tree literally around just Christmas Eve, and that's by choice. Even though in the past few years, the children have been asking as they got bigger, yeah. can we put it up sooner? But we put it up closer to Christmas Day just so that we can enter into the season of Advent, yeah. of waiting, of being patient. Mm -hmm. Because everywhere around us, all the neighbors and different people have all their the trees up, up and, and the lights and, mm -hmm. and so on. But 100 oh, days of Christmas. 100 days of Christmas. Yes, yes, yeah. But it's about, teaching, it's about teaching a lesson about waiting. Now, it's not always easy. Because when you see people getting ready and their homes and so on, you want to get ready too. But it's about stepping back and sitting down and doing the readings, reflecting on the readings, mm -hmm. and looking at every week the light as we light a different candle, the more light comes into the world. And Jesus is the light. Mm -hmm. I think, so the, in, in our family, we try to keep that Jesus is the reason for the season. Mm -hmm. And as we wait, and Jesus cannot be rushed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some things can be rushed, but we have to wait sometimes and be patient with each other as we care for each other, as we, um, so it's more than just that Advent read, but it's about how we wait on each other how we wait on each other, we sit down to have a meal, mm -hmm. how we wait on each other in terms of sometimes you can't rush the other person to forgive, mm -hmm. to love. Um, so to me, all of that is caught up in the whole season of Advent. With regards. It, it, yes, yeah. it's about waiting and it's about patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to say that I am very grateful to my dad who has been um, instrumental in passing down traditions mm -hmm. in our family. Now my mom is Hindu but she converted to Catholicism and my dad is the one who would every year we would sit down with that same booklet. We didn't have the Advent wreath but he still prayed with us every night at, after news and we prayed the Advent prayer and we reflected and we did what we had to. It just became a norm in our house so in Advent you know, I have always known Advent to be just that. And I was telling my fiance, you know, we're going into, when we're married, we're going into that week. And I would like to introduce him mm -hmm. to that because, you know, it's something that I know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what is so important about families celebrating mm -hmm. Advent, that you get to pass down the traditions. Mm -hmm. Tradition, and yeah. then I pass it down with my husband to be to our family. And that's how we continue the glory of God by passing down the good news and celebrating mm -hmm. things like Advent, you know, That's so. Right. The, one of the beautiful things about Advent is that if we also think about what the Holy Family, you know, mm -hmm. was making this journey, and therefore it's a time also, the reason why it's so um, family-centered is because there you have Mary carrying Jesus in the womb, making this journey in the midst of difficulty and, you know, on, on a donkey, mm -hmm. you know. Um, trying to find place, um, the census is happening, and all, all, all of this. So you have a family at the center of the story, mm -hmm. and Jesus is being born in the midst of a family. And therefore, Advent should be this time where we recover a greater sense of our families, of, of, and we could journey with the Holy Family. Where, where would they be now, you know? These, um, it's now what, the fourth? So these 21 days before Christmas, what would, Mary be doing, you know, maybe yeah. Jesus just jumped in her, you know, <laughs> Good um, question. Etc. you know, so that it's, it's important for us to, to reflect on that, because um, we could, as, as we've all said, you know, you talk about putting it up on Christmas Eve, but so often you see people who fly into church Christmas Eve and you say, how are you? They say, tired. I left the ham on the, in the oven <laughs> and I just finished mop and I have to go back home and put up the curtains yes. before midnight, Father, before midnight, <laughs> you know, so I hope we finish at my level, you know, and, and they, they tell you, I'm just ready to drop on Christmas Day. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, they tell you, I don't, I'm not doing that again next year, you know. And the next year is the same That's thing, my mommy. Know? That's my mommy every <laughs> well, single day. But we had day. some of that growing up too, but we also made a lot of space for prayer as well, you know. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very family-centered. And if you read the readings, especially from what I call the O Antiphon, so from the 17th onwards, mm -hmm. where the Magnificat Antiphon all give a different description of Christ, you know, O Rising Son, O Emmanuel, O Key of David, etc. Um, they all speak about the family stories around not just the birth of Christ, but around messages of hope. Um, and, and from the 17th is when the, the church sees this intensified moment of, you know, here, you know, here we are. This is the, as the novena before Christmas, you know. It's the 
Oh, Antiphons in the Magnificat, it's the Aurora Masses, that's mm -hmm. the pre dawn masses that mm -hmm. are done in darkness. And this intensified time, you know. Just to plug something here, the church says, you know, you could begin, you know, putting up your tree. <laughs> but in tradition of the church, people do that around them more, you know, if you want to wait. But, um, but it's, it's really encouraging people to, to bring Christ into their family and really walk with us. I remember Pope Francis said, you know, Advent is a journey of hope. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when we rediscover the beauty of being together along the way, and I, I'm happy Father said that, you know, uh, during that week from the 17th, you can start to put up your tree. Because I read that somewhere as well this yeah, week, yeah. this weekend. And I said, maybe we can put up the tree one day, <laughs> and then we'll put up the lights. You hear that, Ray yes, And yes, then we'll put all the decorations. Right? Oh, now the boys are jumping up. We'll get the boys to do that, right? Yeah. But, you know, I just yeah. said, because it's a journey. Yes. It's a journey yes. and, and great anticipation mm -hmm. Of, of the king, of the yeah. king of kings, you know. So I said, this week, maybe from the Monday, mm -hmm. I start to put up the tree, and then we put up the lights on Tuesday. But I think my tree, our tree, have lights on it one time. But anyway, <laughs> but we made that journey of putting on some of the ornaments on Wednesday, and as we draw closer to Christmas, we bring out the, um, the, mm. the crash. Right. Yeah. Um, and make that journey towards Christmas, you know. Yes. And that, you, what you said is so important. Families should have a crash in their homes. Yes, yes. yeah, so, yeah. Yes. We've lost that too, you know. You know, we have to really recover some of these things. It's, yeah. it's, it's become so secularized, you know. You know what I find, what I realize is a trend, because like when I go into people's home, it's not really the, tra um, the crash, it's like these family village, these villages. Yes. Like everybody has like these villages in their home that they put with like the cotton and all those different things. But you know, that's, that's an Italian things. custom. Like, the Italians, when they do their, their crashes, or precipios as they call them, um, Francis, the, the crash, its first origins is said to be um, in this Italian village where Francis of Assisi was passenger and wanted to have all these and, um, things, uh, figurines, and mm -hmm. they, they had these carved, uh, I visited there, and it's, mm -hmm. it's up in the mountains, and there are, there are caves and stuff. And you see all these huge villages, and in the center of it is a crash. Oh, wow. You know, um, a reminder, a reminder that at the heart of all of our civil life, as it were, at the heart of, to use the more Greek term, the police, you know, which is the political reality that we live in, is this child being born, you know. Mm -hmm. That in the midst of everything that's going on in our lives, there's something else happening that God is doing mm -hmm. that will mark all of our lives forever. So that's also an exciting thing. I know, I know one family that create, make their own little houses and stuff, and you know, stick them. Oh yeah, that's pretty awesome. I said, you know, I must, I have to get a, I have to get a crash. Definitely, I didn't get anything yet, but you know, it's on my list of things to do. Like, you know, Trisha <laughs> has the tree and he lights. Before your wedding, or after no, your after wedding. I don't have any time for that because this is Advent. But after the wedding, <laughs> when I have all the time, I'll be able to get From all the those things. From the seventeenth of December. Um, so as I can see, the show is really I mean picking up and I hope that the audience is enjoying it I am certainly yeah. learning a lot and of course you know we're so happy to have Trisha and Raymond here with us and father who is no longer newbie to the show <laughs> you know so we're just gonna take a short break where it is we're gonna take you to a one short ad and then we're gonna bring you back for your surprise make the ad make the week okay so you can go ahead and we could go to a short break do not have an ad and we just found out that we can't go to an ad because we are actually a little bit running behind we are running over time <laughs> we have no time for an ad so I do apologize to that for that that's is that okay that's not a bad, thing. That's that's a a bad thing. thing yes which means the discussion fine. is going really well yes so time to make the read this is sure. the exciting part father's gonna show us no <laughs> <laughs> So we have our wreath here. So should we take it apart? So you know, just so that people will see. Yeah, it yeah I think not? we should. Yeah, yeah. So we should take it apart. So we have a a plate. A plate. Yeah. Something a plate. That everyone has in their home. We, you know. Everyone has a plate in their home. Right. And um, then you have these four candles and many Catholic um, bookstores and and gift stores sell the Advent candles. So you can get them at, I believe. The Dominican bookstore, you can get them at Sanctuary of the Holy Family or at Living Water, Living Water. or at Mount St. Benedict. Mm -hmm. um, so 
That's where no. you can purchase your wreath with your candles. So some parishes may have it selling. Do the they parish. sell them to, like as a circle already, or, or you have to join? But sometimes, you know, you could go in the average. Um, not to advertise places, <laughs> but you could go to the average stores that sell store. handicraft yeah. stores, stores that sell Christmas trees and, and um, garlands. And mm -hmm. if you don't get a circle, buy a piece buy of a garland wreath and, and you know, just stick just, it together. Yeah. Yes. Right. So All we right. have our wreath on the plate, and we have our candles. But we don't work with matches. We didn't work with matches. Oh, we didn't work with matches. That's all right. I so mean, we put in the four candles. Look how easy that was. Right? And if you want, you could, I mean, it has to go in the center. In the center, yeah. yes. Because right. it's the main focus. Yes. Yes. Right? Okay. So we're going to start now. We just put, put in some decorations, some yes, little things. Because, you know, I mean, although we're keeping it simple, we still want we to. We want to make it attractive. Yeah, we want to make it attractive. Right. You know? So. And get the kids to ask questions maybe if you put on some glitter things they might say oh mommy granny what is that and then you could that is a teaching opportunity for you right. to teach about advent we even so, have a hot glue gun, a hot yeah. glue gun. <laughs> that we, have to, we have to make sure trisha doesn't burn herself <laughs> trisha would you right. like help you right Ooh. so we just we'll just do one, one. demonstration with the hot glue right okay. for um so that we don't get burnt Remember, show. it's a journey of hope, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So hot glue is part of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a little bit too much part of it there, huh? Okay, right. So right. we've got one there. So remember, would you like to try one? Yes, Rachel. Okay. Sure. Father, you right. would definitely be getting some sure. hot glue. You're like, <laughs> no. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> right. I've so done many things. What are we making glue. here? A journey of hope. We're rediscovering right, this right, thing right. along the way. Good. 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 Enough, yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, definitely. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Nice. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nope. No. You know? It's part of the it's reality. Part of life, life, you know? and it's part you know? of family life as Pope well. Francis says the light and shadows in our lives, in our families. Right. And the light and the shadows. Actually, oh, that's good. okay. Okay. There we go. Does that, is that it hot? Has, it has some hot. It has some hot. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Lauren, and it's my your turn. turn. My turn. Right. For everybody along the way. Yep. Um, Crystal, this one is for you, girl. <laughs> and all the ministries, this one is for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a yeah, yeah, I'll just put some glue. I'm afraid of hot glue. All right. right. Yep, and oh. seeing that. Right. right. So, just like as easy as we made it here on the show, and we added our own Decoration. um, decorations to it, is we encourage families to do the same. And you can make this a family event, you know, one person gets the wreath, somebody gets the, daddy gets the candles, or grandma gets the candles, and... You say a prayer to bless the wreath. Oh yes, mm -hmm. you say a you prayer know? to bless the wreath, but this could be something that you could do in your mm -hmm. family, and it is a teaching opportunity. And also, you know, even if you don't have um, purple and pink candles, and you only have white candles, mm -hmm. you, can put, you can put your white candles and, you know, just yeah. cut some ribbon, Purple ribbon, uh, um, three wrap pieces, it around, uh, wrap around, it around yeah. the purple. So we become creative. We become yeah. creative, creative, and then you can put a piece of pink ribbon yeah. around the white no, candle. Traditionally, also, there's a white candle in the center, yes, the white which, candle. Is, which represents Christ, you know, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and you light that at Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I've been in, um, in Rome, for instance, I've been in a parish where on Christmas Day, what they did was they kept the wreath and all four candles, and then in the center, they lit the the fifth candle, they lit the tree, mm -hmm. they found a the baby mm -hmm. going in the crash. So lots of things for people to, you know, lots of symbolism, yeah. very rich symbolism. And at home, we take out the, the four mm -hmm. candles and we put one white candle. Oh, nice. And, you know, we nice. put red decorations yes. around yes. Yes. for Christmas. For Christmas. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. great. Such a lot of different, you know, tips and stuff on how it is you can make this Advent, we, you know, be really what it is. Know something that should be glorified and something that should be witnessed. Yes, you know, something I want to share as Go we in this week of hope. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, each of these virtues, you know, the hope, the love, the joy, the peace, are things that sometimes we don't exactly grasp. You know, mm -hmm. how, how, because hope is not, you know, in, the, in the mind of the church, hope is not optimism. You know, optimism, when you, people say they're optimistic, and oftentimes they mean, 
when things are good, you know, things are all looking good, you know, we, we, we have this positive view of life. But optimism quite often moves according to the circumstances in one's life. Hope is something that is much deeper for the church, that whether things are good or bad, there is hope. Why? Because Christ the light has conquered, you know, and therefore we, we hope because he has gone before us, prepared a way for us. He says, you know, do not be afraid, I've conquered the world. And hope for us requires action. You know, hope is never separate. It's not pie in the sky hope. Hope is, is rooted in a Christian reality of that we act in ways that bring about the kingdom and therefore bring about hope in, in the midst of our lives. So it's, you know, none of the virtues are, are pie in the sky. Mm -hmm. And therefore in our families, we should be asking, how can I bring more hope into my family? Mm -hmm. Can I be more caring or kind? Can I... Can we have a little box? Oh, I'm, I'm preempting your um, question. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> You're preempting my question on. But I'm glad Father talked yeah, about that hope it. Yeah. because you know sometimes at Christmas time, especially in these economic times, people say, "I don't have any money." Oh, right. Gosh, that's I don't right. have any money. Right. Mm -hmm. And how you know it, things are going to be different, and things have been different. I mean, there are less decorations on people's houses, mm -hmm. you know, and even you know on the streets, and so there are less decorations, but. Not, not because we are in low economic times do we not do we do away with Christmas and the celebration of Advent. Yeah. Um, I think it's a wonderful time to give of what you have. That's yeah. right. To give, and, and share with another person. Mm -hmm. So Advent is that, that time of hope is share. A lot of people are losing their jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, we can share what we have with another. So if you're making pastels, Mm -hmm. um, pastel yeah. is a whole day process. <laughs> you can make and share with others. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as, as another, another family, mm -hmm. you could make, you know, even if it's six that you give to another family, you share with others. So it's giving hope oh, to others. others yeah. You're buying, you know, your custom buying a lot of toys for your children. Mm -hmm. You can buy some and share with another. Yeah. You know, you may have a lot of things, a lot of clothes. Women accuse me of having too much clothes, you know? <laughs> and, you know, you, you said, why don't you give away some of those clothes? You know, and I'm I... Know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was surprise, that's Yeah, it. Yeah. 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 like, I mean, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, it, Father mentioned it, right? You talk about, you know, I think our society, we really need to kind of work towards the world getting back to simplicity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, and... and there's a lot of wastage. I'm a, I'm a, a person. I have I try to avoid wastage of mm -hmm. water, of everything, um, clothes. <laughs> 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 if you have, give. You know, yes, give yes. it to somebody who really needs it. You know? Yeah, I believe in that yes. too. I always. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think my dad is like that as well. If we're not using it, if if yeah. it's not that if we're not using it, but if we know that someone else can benefit, yeah. give it, share. Yes. share it with someone else. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, just. It's not going to take anything. It's just share, you know? And, and like share that. it in a good state. Yeah, it is good in state. In a yeah. good state. Because yeah. some yeah. people like to give away. After it's worn out, you've worn it several and times. And expired. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, no, give things that, you know, people, you would want to use yourself okay. so mm -hmm. you give right. to people okay. that, because you don't want to give to some give something that you know you're not using. And then, it's not there. And that inspires hope in, yes. in, in others. And yeah. we, we have to do that, you know, beyond the, you see this commercialization of Christmas, you know. I, I was hearing this song on the radio that said something about, well, if you listen to all our songs, I don't want to pinpoint one, and one song or the other. They speak about you have to have your ham, you have to have your turkey, you have to have your ginger beer, you have to have your sorrel, you have to have your punch of cream, you have to have this, well, you have to have hungry. that. Well, I get hungry. You know, these are all good things. But there are many families that may not be able to afford ham and turkey and all these things and pastels and, because they're expensive, you know. And it's how can we, if we have a whole ham, share some with a yeah. family that we know you know, cut up and share some stuff, invite a family over for a meal, you know. All these things are ways in which, you're right, Trisha, you know, we inspire hope, we spread hope, we mm -hmm. spread love, and we spread to people that in these times, as we come together, we find a way through. Mm -hmm. It's not the end, it's not despair. Where you have, wherever you have a, a human person whose heart is open to God, there will always be hope. Yes, there will always be hope. So, I mean, that, I think we just basically answered the question because... Um, Which question? Well, <laughs> just now. Um, <laughs> in doing my research, I, um, I realized that um, a lot of people, in, a lot of families in this time of waiting, they do a lot of 
outreach projects. Mm -hmm. So if we could sh share some tips, some practical yeah. ways that families can spend their time in Advent, making it, you know, something, uh, making it constructive, making it prayerful. I mean, last night I, I called um, Trisha and I, I wasn't well. And she was like, okay, well, I'm going to call you back because we're going to pray the rosary. And I came yes. up before and thinking to myself, is, it, is that an Advent thing? Or um, does she <laughs> always pray? I guess I'll ask her tomorrow if she prays the rosary. On television. During, during, <laughs> yeah, on television. During Advent, you know, because that's mm. something that families could do as well during yeah. Advent. So what are some tips that no, you can no, share no, with us? Tell her, we, we preempted our Sunday. We pray the rosary on a Sunday. Right. Right. But we preempted it to do our Advent, <laughs> our Advent prayer. Oh, know? okay, okay, yes. okay, okay. And yes, sometimes the boys started. said, when we ask them, which one would you like to do? Oh, the Advent read for me. And sometimes they find the rosaries too long, you know? So yeah. we, we started with the Advent read. But, you know, praying for persons on difficult journeys. I remember last year in our parish, we had the Las Posadas mm -hmm. with um, Father, Father Rosario, Rosario, who went yeah. back to Mexico. And that was such a wonderful journey. Mm -hmm. Um, so praying for persons on difficult journeys, because a lot of people may not be physically in a difficult journey, but health-wise, mm -hmm. um, some people may have no money, and you know they don't know how, how what, where the next meal will come from, and praying for them as well. So praying for people, and refugees, mm -hmm. you know, praying for people on difficult journeys is one way as we sit together to pray the Advent wreath. Um, I think... Um, make you know a lot of times we buy cards for people, but yeah. we can make cards. We can right. make you know sit together and, and make a card. I know Cancel has a promotion on yeah, of fun. making cards for um, families to send to Dominica, Dominica. Yeah. Um, and it we went to one of the children's school, so right. he brought some his card and said, "Mommy, we have to make this card. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to color it up and so on." So that's another way mm -hmm. that we can you know journey along with people mm -hmm. around this time. Yeah. Um, We've I spoken about just some other things. We've spoken about the wreath already. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about putting up the tree together, mm -hmm. as, as you all have said. There is something in the tradition called a Jesse tree. Yeah. Right. Yes. That is a, a very good thing. Uh, it comes out of, I believe it's Isaiah 11, um, verse 1 onwards. That speaks about um, a root shall spring from the stock of Jesse. Jesse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that what a Jesse tree is, is you can day by day in Advent, you look at, you know, Matthew's genealogy, for instance, of Jesus, you know, um, was the son of, was the, you know, that reading mm -hmm. that goes on and on. Mm -hmm. You look at all these characters in Jesus' family history, and you, you learn, okay, and you create a symbol for the different people that are part of this story of salvation. And the Jesse tree is getting to know the whole history of salvation. And some people color different things. Um, for Abraham, they might... Uh, you know, I, I, I've seen someone do stars for Abraham or the, the, the sacrifice of his son, you know, they had him there. But things that, that speak about this person. And it becomes interesting because it's a way of teaching your family the Bible. Mm -hmm. So what they do is each day, you know, they even have package of Jesse trees where you just color what's there and you mm. read. Um, so it's something that is very good to do, but we don't take advantage of in our own culture. Right. But, but it really is a Bible story that helps you realize, oh, all of these people. And then you hear the readings coming through mm -hmm. the Advent season referring to all these people. And you can say, ah, oh, we, we did that at home, you know. Yeah. We colored it, so that was our symbol or, or whatever. Yeah. But um, the Jesse tree is a very beautiful thing to recover. And maybe you can create your own, own Jesse tree. Yes, you have your yes, own yes. lineage, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. your own roots, your own son of this, mm -hmm. and, and so on. Yeah. I think one of the things, too, that we, we can do on December the 8th, as we are talking about the rosary, mm -hmm. I know um, the solemnity of the solemnity immaculate, yeah. of the immaculate conception. conception. On that day in particular, as families, you can sit and pray the rosary. Yes, for sure, rosary, you should. You know, uh, <laughs> you should. pray the rosary. Um, That's the patronal feast of our diocese, the cathedral, you know, the, the cathedral, yeah. is the, the cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. And, and then I was also reading that, you know, Advent, um, we can say yes to some things and no. It's okay to say no to some things. And it, this was with respect to, like, parties and, and so on at Advent. You know, Christmas, uh, Christmas functions. All these Christmas so. functions. Sometimes we get so caught up mm -hmm. in going to this and that and the other and the other. No, we're not saying not to go, but you can cut down. 
Yeah. You can and maybe mm -hmm. offer those tickets to somebody yeah. else. Somebody else may really want That's to right. go and see another, you know, a big concert. You can give it. You can share your tickets with them. Yeah. So you don't have to go to everything. Yes. Um, but you can go to some things. You can go to one concert. You can go to maybe a party or two. But you don't have to go to everything. You can go to the concert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can put it up to that page. You can go to a concert in Santa Grande. Yes. Um, <laughs> with you, go our ahead. young people in our parish have been working very hard. I have been working with them to put on Love Came Down or Come Let Us Adore on the 22nd of oh, December. January. Of December. 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 December at 7 p.m. You know, Trisha and Raymond and their children are coming. Please, God. Um, you know, but long, <laughs> <laughs> she would have just been married. So. Yes, but, yes. but um, but I mean, support parish, support yes. parish support events. Support parish so, yeah, events. This one's fifty dollars. The cheapest and concert. Guess who is the director of it? <laughs> Yours truly. Praise God. Music director, Praise Father God. Matthew. So, um, him, uh, him along with his young people, I'm sure yes. it's going to be pretty good. You know, one of the things we do in our parish as well is we have a huge tub at the doors of the church mm -hmm. where we tell people bring groceries. We want to make hampers to give out to families in need uh, as, a, as a parish and so as we since it's Nepal spearheads the project mm -hmm. but and it's not just Catholic families of course anybody in need. Uh, we ask people to identify and we create hampers and we give out throughout the Christmas season. Living Water downstairs mm -hmm. has a Christmas tree that is bare and what they do on Christmas Day, they feed about 2,500 people who come out as families. And what the project that they do is sponsor me. The Christmas tree is bare, and each decoration is when you, when you give $50, you write your name um, on it and, or, or a message. And that goes towards a meal for someone on Christmas Day mm -hmm. that, that is sponsored. You know? So that's one way you could come out and help here from about six or five in the morning all day on Christmas Day and some people I, I want to share this this really hit me one year um, we used to come down here about four o'clock in the morning to start all the cooking and the preparation and everything and there was a family that came here with all their children and I said to the children um, this was 10 o'clock 11 o'clock in the day you know it's getting closer to lunchtime I said uh, what did you know Santa bring you out and the father stepped in and said Oh no, they are not allowed to open their gifts until they've finished this feeding and helping the poor. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, talk about learning to wait, le learning to mm -hmm. you know, delay gratification. When you have children who want to open the gift <laughs> before it even you know, reaches the tree, <laughs> they've been <laughs> trying to find out everything, which is part of being childlike. But, uh, you know, but that, that discipline of let's go help the poor and then we could enjoy ourselves. Mm -hmm. let's, let's help somebody else enjoy. And then I thought that was very, very beautiful. Yeah. Um. You know, one of the ways I think Pope Francis too is calling us, you know, to, encouraging us to celebrate Advent is chapter four in Amoris Laetitia. Yeah, so you know, love. that love in marriage. Yeah. You know, love, you know, and the first, um, the first line, well, it's not the first line, the first quality of love that he, he talked about was patient. love is patient. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things is, that one of the things that he says, you know, on page 49, paragraph 91, it says, um, slow to anger. It refers then to the quality of one who does not act on impulse and avoids giving offense. We find this quality in the God of the covenant who calls us to an intimate, who, who calls us to imitate him also within the life of the family. And I think he also says, unless we cultivate patience, we will always find excuses for responding angrily. Right. And I think at, at this Christmas, as we prepare for Christmas, a lot of times people on edge because things are not being done perfectly mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. so on. And pride, that's where pride kicks in, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I want it now, I want it like this. And, but I think Advent calls us to looking at being humble and, and you know, express humility to ourselves and to others. And it's okay if we didn't get it right. That's okay. We wouldn't always get it right. But it's about seeing the bigger picture yeah. and encouraging others to help too. They may not be able um, to do all the things that you can do, but everybody in the family can make an mm -hmm. input into this whole Advent yeah. celebration. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we need to look at this, this Christ, as we prepare for 
in, in Advent, Advent, it's how pride kills Advent. Yes. Pride kills love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole aspect of waiting patiently. And in, you know, in this chapter four of Amoris Letizia, it really brings it out. In do we still have books to sell? <laughs> <laughs> we do still have a few books to sell. So the cheapest sale you could find. <laughs> Um, and, but of course, tonight, um, we have our audience with us watching, mm -hmm. and as part of the Family Life Commission, we have the Advent Prayer and Reflection Book, and we are going to pray with you tonight. So we are going to do the reading of the day from the Advent booklet, and um, if you can just sit with us, and if you, in this time, gather your family, and um, this Advent booklet can be purchased via our office. So we're just going to begin now. Um, Ray, you want to start? <clears throat> All right, we're going to start with the quote from uh, Genesis, right? But of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, You must not eat it, nor touch it, under pain of death. Then the serpent said, God knows in fact that on the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. It appears to me, so this is a reflection, it appears to me that all temptations in life are exactly the same temptation written about in Genesis 3. In our temptation to sin, it is always a matter of God's will versus our will. And because we want to be gods of our own lives, our eyes are open to evil and blinded towards God's loving will for us. The freedom to choose, or free will, is the most important aspect of God's love for us, his creatures. Yet, it is this very aspect of our, of our cre creaturehood that we use to reject his love and choose sin. It was not the tree in the middle of the garden that had the power to bring about original sin. It, would, it was Adam's and Eve's attitudes towards God and the tree that brought about the sin. It was something within their hearts, God's loving voice versus their rebellious voice. It is the same with us today and every day. We must now come to a place once again in our lives where God's loving voice triumphs over any other voice. So gracious is God's love for us that even though he knew the fragility of the human spirit, he still made a covenant with us. That would mean eventually the offering of his own son on the cross. That is what you call love. So maybe we could share a little bit on that, you know. Well, I, I was thinking about, you know, um, just to bring that in, in, in tune with the liturgy that, that we celebrate and in these days, the opening prayer mm -hmm. of the um, of this week, so for the opening prayer yesterday, spoke about us running to meet Christ with our with the righteous deeds, you know, that we have done. The blessing, there's there's the optional blessing, and it's encouraged in Advent season that the priest can give at the end of of the Mass on Sundays, and um, in there it speaks about going out to meet Christ with our good works, mm -hmm. you know that at the heart of, of what we are trying to live in this Advent season is being different, it's being transformed, it's not being selfish. And at the heart of the story of Adam and Eve and what happens there is pride and you know, the self-centeredness and not trusting God, you know, not trusting God that God is enough, that God's word is enough, that you know, God will provide, that what God has said will be for our happiness. We don't need to, you know, reach out and grab for ourselves. And, and the, the opening prayer and the prayer of blessing in the liturgy yesterday reminds us that in this Advent, what is very important, as we heard in the Feast of Christ the King, is the ways in which we live that cares for each other, that, that is a reminder for us to uh, do all the things we spoke about, especially the works of charity, requires us to deeply know that God is enough, that God will provide that we don't have to reach out and grab. We have a grab in society, you know, free thing, everybody grab and go. That's what they did, you know, they grabbed at what God said 
No, don't take, you know. But God knows what's best for us. And therefore, there's this reminder that God who made us, you know, those last words of the first reading yesterday, you are our Father, we the clay, you the potter, we the work of your hands, you know, our Creator. So I just want to thank everyone for, you know, just coming together and sharing with our audience, you know, all of this wonderful information. And thank you for, you know, just, I feel revitalized. I feel rejuvenated. I feel like I can wait. And I'm pretty sure the audience feels that way too. Thank you for that sharing, Father. Thank you for the sharing as well. You know, um, we're cutting time very close and we're down to a couple of minutes. So as usual, we always say that we'd love to do a part two of every show that we have, but you can look out for us next year, Advent. We will do a part two to this one. Um, but we are cutting close to the time, and we just want to say, I think um, everyone would like to say thank you. You know, a special thank you to um, our audience. Um, I don't know, Trish, Raymond, you all want to say anything? As we close off this year and we close off these, um, the show for the year, is there anything you'd like to say to our audience? Well, I'd like to say thank you, you know, just for journeying with us over this year at the Family Life Commission, supporting what we do, just being present, you know, in the midst of all the mess of life or family, because family life could be messy at times. You've, you've stayed with us, and, you know, it's about making that journey of hope. Pope Francis is calling us to that, making that journey of hope this Advent. And, you know, sticking with it is about sticking with it and seeing the good of the other, seeing the good of the other. It's a challenge for me, and um, I want to challenge you, too, that, you know, Advent is about hope and it's about patience. And thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, my message is pretty simple. Just, you know, I mean, uh, wish everyone a, a happy Advent, a happy Christmas, and as well as... You know, we, we have to keep working on our, our families. It's, it's work. It's, it's not something that comes easily. We have to work on our family life. Um, and if we work on our family life, then we could change our society to, to make it better. Thank you for so. that. Father? In this time when we celebrate love Came that down. comes down to us, you know, God so loved, he sent his son. It is a time for us to also remember that we are being invited to love. You know, and, and, and that... That's not a, a wishy-washy thing. I love you. I don't love you. You know, it's yeah, something it that is, that way, yeah. you know, in the words of Thomas Aquinas, it's willing the good of the other. And I want to encourage people in this Advent and Christmas season to, to act in ways, to will, you know, and, and therefore to choose ways that bring life to others. Mm -hmm. And therefore that's showing love, even if it's praying for them, you know, but, but concrete ways in which we can give life to those in our families, those among our friends, those we see, the strangers. And the people God sends our way. They're all gifts from God. Okay, and I think basically they have wrapped it up, but I wrapped it up first, but I just want to say a special thank you to our audience for waiting with us and for always staying true to us and always watching us and staying loyal to our show because we actually we, we know we have people, I mean there are places that I go and people actually know that, you know, um, know about the show and they speak so so good about the show and i just want to say thank you and thank you for showing us all the love all the hope i know you pray for us and you pray for whatever work we do at the family life commission so we just want to say a special thank you from the family life commission and our ministries and all the persons that we work with a big thank you thank you for your love your support and keep praying for us that we will be back next year with a bang with more uh, intriguing stories, topics, and a lot of more information for you. So thank you so much for joining us, and please enjoy Advent season and have a safe Christmas. Merry Christmas Merry in Christmas. advance. Yeah. Yes. Merry Advent. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you and enjoy the rest of the year.